Okay. Well, brothers and sisters, I'm really excited to introduce uh, Brother Robinson, who's going to be our, our webinar speaker today. Just to introduce him a little bit, I've known him my whole career. Uh, Daryl and I have, have worked in several committees and several, um, well, we, we taught together at Bingham Seminary, and uh, he used to live just down the street from me as well. And so Daryl is a fantastic individual that I think will, will offer a lot of great expertise. But to give you some, some highlights of his career, besides uh, being um, getting a, a, a graduate degree in online teaching and learning, he is, he's ha served on these different committees to help figure out how to best improve online teaching for public education, for the church education, for BYU-Idaho. He's taught for several universities and, and, and uh, programs. And so he comes to you with a, a kind of a mixed bag of different options and opportunities. But what I love best about Daryl's approach is that his ability to, to um, organize the materials for students to go through, as well as to have an organizational structure that students are used to and comfortable with, is worthy of our time to learn from. He, he's a master uh, online teacher, and we're really blessed to be able to have him to speak with us today. Uh, he's currently teaching online seminary in the Arizona Online Seminary, which is one of our pilot programs. Uh, he still lives in Utah, but teaches in, in Arizona, so it's kind of a, a, a good deal for him. Um, and so I'm going to turn the time over to you, Brother Robinson, and whatever you need, just let me know. All right. I still don't know why I get nervous for these things. You've done them so many times, but um, you can stop me as I go, or I could just kind of plow through this, and we can just have some questions at the end. So if you want to speak up, that's fine. If not, then I'm just going to plow through kind of my philosophy of uh, teaching for seminary and institutes. And I, I say it's my philosophy. I've developed it from uh, the words of living prophets, uh, mostly from... Oh, you know, this core document is so important um, to each of us. Uh, I do think that we spend a lot of time um, up here in the objective of seminaries and institutes, and we're not spending maybe enough time in, down in the conversion, relevance, and belonging, especially on the last line, invite diligent learning, being focused on Christ, and teaching doctrines found in the Word of God. And so I could spend hours just talking about how we can do this in online um, learning, but I just wanted to bring, you know, to, to your attention, things that have shaped my philosophy. And I think out of everything that's shaped how I teach, both when I did it in person and online, is really the teachings of uh, the living prophets and mm -hmm. um, the scriptures. These should be our original sources, Elder uh, President Benson said. We they should be the center of everything that we do. And so I'm just going to teach a couple things. Um, and again, you can stop me or whatever. I think this is uh, one of the quotes that was most, um, that kind of molded who I am today. It's by Elder, um, well, President Oaks. He was elder at the time. Um, President Packer off, often taught in my hearing that we first adopt and then we adapt. If we go through uh, and grounded in the prescribed lesson that we are given, we then we can follow the spirit and adapt. And I really like that. First adopt and then adapt. And that's what I'm going to really focus today a lot on is how do we adopt and how do we adapt? Um, the seminary curriculum is written by um, people who have been called and um, assigned and really have... Um, you know, the, the blessings of not only the Lord, but the seal, I would say, of the church, if that's okay. And we can talk a little bit about correlation and how the material comes to us. I will say in online seminary, it's kind of shifting a lot because we're trying to figure out exactly what it should look like. So we see things continually changing. But what doesn't change is the that second paragraph about how we get, you know, background information, scriptures that are really valuable and contents. And over my career, I've been teaching for about 25 years full-time. Um, I see a lot of teachers who kind of have, especially early in my career, we kind of ignore the manuals and ignore the curriculum and just dig in and start to prepare their own lessons. And I just think it's really, really important for us to, I just like that last line, as teachers use curriculum in tandem with this study of the scripture block, 
then the Holy Ghost can inspire them. And they can personalize the lessons for the needs of their students. And I always say when I'm teaching um, scripture marking ideas that the right way to mark your scriptures is your way as long as you have a way. And so I would say the same thing about teaching. Why do you teach the way you're teaching? You know, and really, especially with online, we, we just need to evolve and continue to teach each other. If I was teaching this a year from now, I probably will have a different method, but that's that's fine. So let's start with adopt. And I, I can give uh, Brother Goldheart a copy of this PowerPoint if you'd like, but I just screenshot a, a couple things. This is a um, curriculum that we'll probably be getting next year. And I just kind of really like how it's already kind of packaged for us. Um, and in th this example, there's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, I really am intrigued with a daily check-in. So really, you have to ask yourself, um, I think the purpose of what we're trying to do is have our students have a daily experience in the scriptures and the words of the living prophets, but more importantly, that they're having a daily connection with the Savior, right? And so I really like um, the format that's given to us. Um, sometimes I uh, will... And I really love it. The greatest blessing of all is really the come follow me, um, that we are able to study the same thing as seminary students as we're doing in Sunday school, young men, young women, and um, and more importantly, in the home. I mean, seminary is online seminary is so easy because all we're, they're really doing is their personal scripture study and then reporting it to the class or the teacher. And uh, what they do on a daily basis as an online seminary and institute teacher a uh, student is what they should be doing anyways and we're just providing the material and a place to talk and so i really love what what president nelson did when he talked about the home centered church supported um uh church and i i think this has dynamically changed the way we do things and we often refer to this as home centered seminary supported study of the scriptures and so as we all study together i really want my students studying every single day but I also want to say, hey, what did you guys do in your home? Because I don't want them just to study their scriptures and then just tell me or the class. I want them to share what they're learning with their home. I want them to share it also um, in church and in just every avenue that you can. Now, I'll have to take credit for this quote because I think this is really what we're looking for. I heard someone else give it, but I haven't seen it in print yet. So I think it really should be a personal and family-centered church uh, centered and a church and seminary supported because we're really trying to get that individual that that student of ours to daily sip into the scriptures and the words of living prophets so um so let's go back to this quote adopt and adapt so let's talk a little bit more about adapting now so i got the curriculum i i have always go through it first what's there what do i uh what do i like i'm not a big guy to overwrite write everything I really like stuff that's already gone through correlation, but I do organize it a little bit different. So this is just how I do it. Um, my students, I teach more students in release time and they're going to seminary usually every other day. And so it's a little different than if I, if I was a uh, early morning teacher, they're coming every day. And so, um, and I have a lot of students that just are so, so busy. Again, my expectation is that, um, they're in the scriptures every single day, but some days are so busy, I still want to give them that opportunity. So notice a couple things um, is I retitle all the assignments, OT44, that's week 44. I just do it right along with Come Follow Me. But these are all exact lessons that I've taken. Uh, maybe I sometimes adopt the songs. I know when um, Brother Goldheart and I were originally writing um, the online seminary, what maybe 15 years ago right um we were doing a lot like planned in a, a song sing it um or sometimes we evolved to mormon tabernacle choir but i think at least my students and i teach seminary students really love the lds music inspirational gospel music that can really kind of connect them to the savior so i really try lots of times to connect them um to to music that they would that they could maybe have on their listening device, their phone. So when they're in a moment of crisis, they'll fall back on them. So this is the new um, Come Follow Me music, the uh, For Strength of Youth music. We'll use it in the FY and their youth conferences. This came out last week. And so I implanted this into one of my lessons. And then I also, if you look down here, I give them additional choices. 
And one of the choices was, hey, listen to the new album, pick your fit couple favorite songs and um, write, write to me why you like it. And I actually copied and pasted this all out of the church news. So again, um, it's come from an official church source. Um, sometimes I will edit a little to make it look good. But again, I just try to be creative a little bit and throw up an extra assignment. You'll find out why I give extra assignments in, in maybe just a minute. But um, so again, that's uh, what I call additional learning opportunities. So um, again, on this, uh, they only had to pick a song that they liked, um, write a principle that they learned in the song. And it's a pretty easy uh, assignment. And a lot of my students have reported back. They really, really like this one. So um, one thing I do kind of modify, like yeah, our lessons are not always equal. Some are shorter, some are bigger. And so I kind of tell them, hey, can you just study 30 minutes? I don't care for my students. I don't care if you get through all the information. Uh, if you can get in there 20 or 30 minutes and just really, even if it's a verse or two, but you're getting a lot out of it, that's okay for me. And so I really kind of almost have to tell, again, I have seminary students. I almost got to tell them like, don't do too much. You know what I mean? Uh, it's really easy if you structure this right to make sure they're doing enough, if that makes sense. And so sometimes I'll put in something like that. Or at the end of the um, lessons, I usually put in a thing I call returning report. So that's 15 minutes. And so lot, sometimes that is um, going to a discussion board. And I do discussion boards just a little bit different than how they're given. Um, I like discussion. I like one discussion board for the whole week. Because what I'm trying to do, discussion boards are the way online um the online community, how we have a discussion, just like a face-to-face a, a -face class would talk, you know, and so I really want them in, I want them making a good post, and I want them to be talking to each other about their post and what they're learning, and so um, my requirement to get credit is they write a couple paragraphs, and I just say about 100 words, I'm not a word counter, but they're also responding to two people, about 50 words a paragraph, so in all, about 200 words, about four paragraphs. So when I have that standard that big, um, and it's not huge, it's not overwhelming, but it's large enough that they they really have to go to the material and pull something out of it. So I don't want a one-liner or two lines. I really want a little bit of meat. But notice the last adapt is, is a link that takes me back to the first page, and that becomes our discussion board. So our discussion boards look like something like this. Um, where students will report what they learned, a couple of paragraphs, and then um, they'll kind of start commenting on each other's. And again, they'll they'll label what day it is um, that they're doing their lessons. So um, I wanted to stop for a moment and just talk about Elder Kimby Clark. Um, he gave this great talk that kind of governs how I do my seminary classes. He talked about this quadrant of standards and love, right? And um, he, he gave this actually to BYU-Idaho instructors also, but the, I pulled this out of a talk he gave at BYU-Idaho devotional. Um, he talks about the best quadrant to be is somebody who has high standards and high love. And he talks about when we go to one of the other quadrants, we can run into some danger. Um, for instance, high love but low st standards we can love our students to death and we could say, hey, I don't want to require you to do anything because I love you so much. But then you're not really teaching the doctrine and you leave um, your students kind of empty handed at the end. And so, again, that high love is important, but also requiring them to do something is just absolutely critical. Um, the, the next one here he talks about is high standards, uh, low love. Um, so we, we don't want to be so strict and so hard on our students that, hey, this is a harsh, judgmental, you know, canvas is hard enough as it is. It's even harder if they're not feeling that they're loved by somebody and that somebody on the other end is really um, want them to know that they're important and what they're learning is important. And then the Carol, last, yes. Jennifer has a question about discussions. Uh, okay. she, put the, she put in the chat room, when do they need to have their initial post for the week done? <sighs> Uh, so I don't have a requirement when I teach for some of the universities, I have a requirement that it has to be done early in the week. What I do break my students up into their, I have a one Canvas course for all my 150 students, and then I break them up into individual groups. And so usually somebody gets it in early. 
Um, I've had some classes in the past that everyone's kind of doing Friday work, and that's hard to get a discussion. But I don't have a requirement of a certain day, and it's not been a big problem. I have, and I could do a whole lesson on discussion boards. So there's times I'll do like a question of the week or, and by the way, I should say that I let my students do a lot of the discussing here because I want student to student learning. I, I find when I answer too much in here, they start playing towards me instead of playing towards each other. So I use the announcement boards as a lot of place that I can get some interaction with my students, but I do read these and I do comment from time to time, but I really want them commenting to each other. Is that good, Jennifer? Yeah, that's good. I was just curious because I, I mean, I did BYUI, so I kind of know how it works there. And then like, I've noticed it doesn't work that way in seminary. And I'm like, I miss that because my kids don't interact with each other. They each write their little blurb and they're done because they've checked the box for seminary and they're done. Yeah, I, I've had really, really good luck with, because I require a standard, a high standard there, I've had really good luck. I can't say that I don't have late week uh, um, posters. I'll, let me share. I think when I get to my Zoom classes, that might help you um, know why people post early too. So great. Any other questions? So again, we're trying to get this high love and 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 high standards and kind of keep it there, right? So again, I require a lot from my students, but I also just try to really help them get there and provide ways that they can get there um, easily, right? So I just wanted to make the statement that Wise2 and Canvas are not friends and they don't speak to each other, right? I'm in favor of that. Like, these two, I wish these two would work. Uh, I think the hardest thing for me as a teacher is to, especially when I have, I have a large number of students, about 150. And so to move what they've done in the grading book in Canvas over to what the attendance in WISE is a really, a little, little hard for me. So um, I just want to share with you kind of my grading philosophy and how this year has been so, so much better for me and so easy. So um, basically every lesson for me is worth 10 points and that's every 10 points is worth one day credit. So we have five lessons a week. That's 18 weeks uh, or 90 days, right? And or that would be 900 points. So we're shooting for 900 points. Now, um, you'll notice in a minute, you notice on the prior ones with all my modules, I always give them more than five to do. This can be also including the, um, Zoom, and I just give them some of the extra activities, and I sometimes even have more um, lessons than, um, than than five. I just don't give them the exact of what they need. But as you notice, as, as, as I give 10 points each, I can look here at their score, and I can say they have 40 days done, they have 53 days done, they have 57 days done. Their Zooms are also included in here. And so I can go in the grading book without wise. Now five means they didn't quite like, did, didn't engage in commenting on their classmates post. And so I kind of look for those fives. And then when they start doing really well, I'll, I'll round them back up. But I can just look in here and I can just say, I can know exactly how many days that they're, they're done. And so that's really been beneficial to, to me a lot in, in my work. Any questions about this? How do you like transfer that to wise two if you I mean if it's not marked by days like I finally had to relabel all my lessons so I know what day it is that they did something. Yeah, so throughout the week and mostly I, I tell parents I will get your um, the I'll get wise updated. The, I shouldn't say this, but one of the great blessings to me is this semester because I don't live in my area um wise they were hard to get wise into my class and so i had to communicate without wise and it really was a blessing because i got people really to rely on the canvas grade book but for me i'm at least on every monday everything's graded the wise uh score my seminary is totally updated by that point but i do it throughout the week also but again i'm looking at total day for me i look at total days done and not that the work was done on a specific day now your coordinator and and your priesthood leaders might have a different approach but my approach is i just want them to get up to those 90 days credit 
And by the way, it's actually 75% of that, but I never really, I never really advertise that. If they ask me about that, that's fine. So it's really what 68 days or something like that. But I, if, if you notice, I have some students over here. This student right here is just phenomenal. Um, she's done everything for the whole semester. But the funny thing is she'll keep going. So, so here's what a regular week looks. This is, again, um, what I showed you earlier. So notice that there's more than five lessons. And also notice that down here where I have my Zoom and my weekly report. So my Zoom classes... I want them, and maybe this is back to that discussion board, I want them to do lessons before we meet in Zoom. The Institute model, I just absolutely love. It's kind of a flip classroom where they kind of are studying during the week, and then we have having classes on Wednesday and Thursday or Friday. And so I kind of do the same thing in seminary. So they're coming into my, I do all my Zooms on Thursday. And, and so they come in here. Um, this is just from the church website. Those are not my students. My students make funnier pay, pay faces. I will say, whenever I teach a class, I always screenshot them. I just say, hey, everyone smile. And I just file them away, but I have proof that they've come. There's other ways that Zoom can tell you who's come and how long they've been there. If you need to know, we can help you with that. But So um, just a couple quotes about the classroom in general. Um, we put a lot of burden on, on learning on the students. We, we as teachers take too much of the burden. Uh, Elder Jay Jensen said, we need to shift that. And, and then this is a, uh, Richard G. Scott. He said, never, and I mean never give a lecture where, where there's no student participation. A talking head is the weakest form in class instruction. We've all heard that and applied it to the face-to-face -face classroom. But I think this is a deadly bullet if we're um, online. We really need to have these discussions. And the whole church has kind of changed to this discussion approach. It, by the way, lots of times we talk about the scriptures, but we're not in the scriptures and we're not in the words of living prophets. And so we need to kind of find ways. How do we get them not only just sharing their ideas about something, but really teaching each other out of the scriptures? So this is what I do. Um, I do a thing called Quest. Um, it's an acronym that um, I actually got this from a teacher that I was supervising last year. He, his was different, but um, it's questions, understanding, edification, stories, and testimonies. So I teach them how to find questions, um, how to look for doctrines and principles, and what's the difference of those. Um, edification is really the application of it. How do we improve ourselves because of what we just learned? A story, um, stories are so connected into what we're learning, and then a testimony. So they need to bring something that they learn during the week, one of these elements from a verse or uh, several verses together. So every one of my students are bringing something with them to class. And for me, this is a game changer. It allows me to prepare my lessons. Instead of preparing them on PowerPoint and trying to guess how they're going to go, I prepare myself rather than prepare my lessons. And so I, I, I read the material. I, I'm the, a very active student. I'm, I, I'm very familiar with the material. So when they bring in their insights from a certain verse, then I can help teach that or, or can steer a conversation about what they were interested in. So this has been really valuable for me um, to, to kind of have that expectation that you come to class prepared. By the way, I could never do that in a face-to-face -face class. I could give you like a hundred reasons why online learning is so much better than face-to-face. -face, and this is one of them. My students come to class prepared. So I think we have a higher engagement of, of what we're studying together. So anyways, um, also notice at the end, I have a weekly report. So again, I'm trying to keep Canvas. I want to, where do I put Zoom then in Canvas? So um, after the class, they go on and do a weekly report, and it looks something like this. Oh, these are some extra assignments I should have said. So I teach them that acronym. I teach them how to find questions, how to find doctrines and principles. So these are some of the additional lessons that I've kind of prepared. So again, the progress report. Well, this is a print one I've got on principles. We can talk about that another time. So I just ask them, and this is a game changer. I really like this one. I just ask them what's happening in their personal life and their family life. And what are you dealing with in your life? Uh, 
that this has been like a game changer to me because I get to really know them and it allows me to respond back to them about their individual life. I ask about their daily reading and remind them they should be updating it. But now I have a backup of what they did read. Um, I ask them if they went to the Zoom and this slide is incorrect. It should be it should be an open it. It's an open place that they put in their quest that they brought to class. And then what study skill are you working on this week? And then what did you learn this week? Um, and 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 this is more about the savior. And so overall, um, to fill that out doesn't take a long time. So I'm giving them almost another 10 points. I'm almost giving them 20 for the for the Zoom, but maybe not because they could fill out the weekly report and not go to the Zoom. Does that make sense? So, but I do love that weekly report. And I noticed that there is a daily report and what we're looking for maybe next quarter. And I I, I would love to know more about that and see if that worked better. So any questions about this so far? I beg you, uh, this is uh, President Irene, I beg of you for yourselves and for your students to have the faith that they'll want to read the scriptures, not that we drive them into it, but they'll be drawn with them. And so I try to do things that will draw my students and, and I try to say a lot, like, let's not let Canvas and let's not let online learning get in the way of your personal study and your connection with the Savior. And really, when we take that pressure of figuring out the module, I will say it's been really, really important to me to have kind of a, a personal one-on-one -on -one with the student and the parents um, early on in the first week or two. When I've done that and I've clearly answered their questions and they see just how easy this is, they by far exceed. The ones, my students that are struggling, I can't get them to just come together with me. Once I can meet with them, boy, I, I have great success. So um, again, additional learning opportunities. We've mentioned the one about for strength of youth, but again, this is one on using the study tools. This is footnote. I just copied and pasted and pulled this out of a lesson, but I noticed that sometimes students skip it in a lesson, but if it's a separate lesson in and of itself, they may do this one. Um, and so again, I ask them to do something at the end. This is actually one I wrote. I have great um, luck in, to study chapter headings. And so I asked them to read the chapter heading of the book that we're studying, like Isaiah or this week Ezekiel, and uh, or read the whole Testament in the chapter headings. They get this broad overview of the scriptures. So um, again, these are probably, this one is not, not coming down from in, in curriculum, but it's very related to curriculum and almost everything I'm putting in there are, is correlated material. This was actually another one that uh, came as a correlated material. I just changed the title and brought it down to the extra area. And I really love these ones that are focused on Christ. This is one I made. This is an adapt one. Um, when the new force strength of youth came out at general conference this last time, I quickly made a module, posted it up there and had this by Sunday morning. Um, and a lot of my students have really loved being able to dive into that. And um, using this as kind of a way to catch up. And I'll talk about makeup in a second. So. Um, so I'm a guy who likes to teach students how to learn. And um, that's that, that last bullet point on the objective, um, prepare students to be successful learners. And so I kind of teach them that role and kind of hope, hopefully they um, understand that. And so that's why you see a lot of these things about how to study the scriptures better, what resources can we use, how to ask questions. And I spend a lot of time on how to um um, answer your questions. Again, I, I found in my face-to-face -face experience, we would have a question. We had even a question box. We'd talk about it. We never had a resource. I can throw out a question of the week now, like when was the last time General Conference was canceled, you know, and they can go and use Brother Google or Sister Safari, and they can go and they can find it. And I try to teach them how to use those internet tools in a safe way, and, and how they could know like the difference between trustworthy sources. I call them primary, that's church uh, approved curriculum. And then I have some secondary. Secondary is good faithful um, sources, um, places like Book of Mormon Central um, and, and scriptures.byu.edu. Um, and then good 
other Christian based ones. And then we want to make sure that they're aware of um, ones that could get could give them some wrong information. So makeup works kind of interesting for everybody. I know a lot of people just leave all the modules online. Again, my philosophy, I really want to teach them the daily scripture study of what we're all studying. So for have them go back and and do something way back, it it doesn't quite fulfill what I'm looking to try to do. I'm trying to get them to have a pattern of daily study what everyone else is studying so that they can engage in conversations and communications with what they're studying. So it's not busy work for me. So again, I throw up more modules than what's needed. That's one thing that I do. Um, again, 10 points a lesson, 90 lessons. So if they look here and they see they're just a little behind, they can just do extra lessons. My modules open on Monday, they'll close on Friday, but occasionally I have something open during the weekend and I'll share that with you in just a minute. I also build modules on weeks, like we have a two week fall break in Arizona. And so I had modules there that they could work on. Some people travel, but a lot didn't. So a lot of them were able to keep, kept, keep caught up. And I do them at Thanksgiving, winter break, spring break, and um, when they allow me over the summer, even I, all the curriculum's written for the whole year. So why not just be putting material out and teaching students how to engage in a good, you know, because some are slower at getting going, right? Um, so here's one that I had super good luck. So I built a module. Again, I took it out of the church news. The church news asked us to prepare for the October 2020 general conference by studying a talk a day. So again, this is not correlated seminary material, but I would argue that it's correlated material from the church. Um, they they asked us to prepare in this way. So what I did is I created a module. Um, this is just explaining. Um, basically, most of this is cut and paste from that uh, church news article. So I set uh, together a module for 30 days of preparing for general conference. So every day we had a different talk. There's actually 34 talks. So early on, I gave them a chance to do two. So a talk would open and then each day one would close and another one would open. And I had two open at all times just because of that busy day. So again, I really stressed to them, I don't want this to replace what you're doing. I want it to enhance. So I really want them in to come follow me. But if you're behind, this is a great thing to, to, to jump in and do. So when I build it um, and I just went down and I did them by um, authority, uh, seniority so president nelson's the day before general conference right so um they would pull up like this is president nelson he actually gave three talks in the conference before i put all three there and said you could study one or three it was interesting to listen to most of my students that did this um reported they listened to all three they listened and marked and then i asked him to do and this was really critical i think for our success they had the same questions every talk so once i did a talk or two they knew what they were looking for. So I just asked them, did they read? Um, can you find three questions that you could come up with out of their talk? Um, can you, what's the doctrines and principles that you discovered in their talk? And then I said, um, uh, use the gospel library uh, feature or the general, uh, or the church website. And can you find a companion talk? Um, and I'm trying to teach them how to use the tools, right? Um, what's your three favorite quotes from this? So if they, even if they didn't want to read the talk and study it, they're going to be doing some work that shows you and um, that they did it. And then number six was, um, they're always ask us and invite us to do things. And so what were the to do's in this? Or I invite you's. And then there's always usually promised blessings. So what promised blessings did you hear? And last and probably most important, what did you learn about Jesus Christ? But that was the same for every single talk. And so I had a lot of students that really loved, they struggle in the Old Testament because the language is so hard, but they don't struggle with listening to a prophet because they relate so much to their daily basis, uh, their daily work. So again, it's that high love, high standard. Any comments or questions about that? So this is what I'm working on right now, and I'll release it to my students um, on Sunday. So um, right now we're getting towards the end of the quarter. I have a lot of people really far behind. I was trying to figure out a way to catch them up and not have it be busy work and have it be meaningful. 
So we are going to take the next two months and we're going to, um, as a side module, we're going to study Jesus Christ in the topical guide. Now, this is a challenge that President Nelson gave to all members of the church, something that he himself did. And in his talks, he said, this is the most profound thing that he ever did. Now, he did it 2,200 scriptures in six weeks. We're actually going to do it in eight. So, um, but again, same principle as last one. I just took all the attributes of Christ in the topical guide. I copied and pasted them into, this is President Nelson explaining what he did. And uh, so what they need to do is they need to uh, develop, uh, spend the time studying about 30 minutes and then 15 minutes to report it. All they've got to do is develop a scripture chain and I say three to five verses. Find a quote um, on the topic that you're learning about. Locate a picture of Christ in that attribute. Uh, a lot of kids love visual learning. And so I'm really interested on this one and upload it. And then last of all, can you share your testimony um, uh, while you're doing this exercise? So again, I've just copied and pasted this, but they don't have to do it there. They could do it on their gospel, on their phone. Or they could do it in their paper scriptures. And, and again, the, the key to this is, I don't want to just open everything up and say, go. One opens every day. One closes every day. I have two open at the same time. It's all time, so I don't have to worry about going in and opening and closing it. And I, I had a parent today that said their their child refused to, to do any seminary. And they says he has a good attitude about the church, but he just doesn't want to do seminary. And I, I invited her to discuss this project with him, and I'm hoping what happened in my my living prophets one general conference one has had a lot of students were non-participators who became participators and i'm hoping at least he's doing what i want him to do right have a have a experience in the scriptures every day and the words of living prophets and um and and connecting with the savior every single day so if he's not in the modules but he's building his testimony that's that high love, right? Okay, mom, let's work something out with this. So anyway, so again, you, you see the questions are all exactly the same. So that's the Brother Robinson's philosophy of instruction as of, I should have put today's date because if you ask me in another month, it might be a little bit different. But our quest is to help our students find Jesus Christ so that we can walk back home, so that he can walk back home safely with them. And so I just bear my testimony that we are working with our students, seminary and institute students, and their eternal salvation is, is kind of dependent on them connecting to the Savior while they're with us. When we aren't who they need to connect to. We just need to direct them to the Savior. But I've been studying the enabling power of the atonement recently, and I'll just tell you, they, they really need the Savior, maybe not even as much for the redeeming power, but the challenges that they have in their everyday life is just so remarkable. But we're members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. A saint is the one who makes himself holy. And I think it's phenomenal that we have a title that says, we can make ourselves holy in the latter days through Jesus Christ. And I give you that testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, did I bore you? Any questions? It's kind of like drinking out of the fire hydrant. You're like, ah, glad they turned the water off. So, I need a... Any question? Go ahead. I have a question about um, the modules. So like each day, like sometimes our modules have like three parts. Sometimes they have four. Sometimes they have five and it varies. So do you just count 10 points? And like some things are 15 and some things are five and some things are 10. So did you just make them all the same? So that was what I did to ad adapt, right? So, and I agreed with you, like, um, I give like 13 lessons in a week, but it's all the same curriculum that you're doing in five. I'm just, I, again, I just am trying to streamline it, make it a little bit easier, but I will go and change the points for me to 10, just because it just lets me know how many, and I'm dealing with a lot of students. If I was dealing with five or six, maybe I would, I wouldn't care, but it allows me to kind of get in there and not spend, I don't want to spend tons of time updating wise. I want to spend tons of time communicating with students and you know co commenting to them so it's for me it streamlined it but there's a little bit of time to do that but but not a lot got it Thanks. all right
Daryl, can you explain? Um, I think it's important to recognize that your students are release time seminary students. And so they're, they're used to a different style of seminary than an early morning seminary student. Um, it's a little bit more um, intense in a lot of ways. So can you describe uh, makeup work and, and help, them, help us understand why you've chosen to do those modules for makeup work and, and what, what are some of the philosophies behind the makeup work aspect? Like, why did you choose to go that direction? I think with online learning, um, if you get behind, you get really, really discouraged. And a lot of people who get behind just don't know how to do a module. You know what I mean? If they realized how easy it was, I mean, they would be doing it, right? And so I think it's just, for me, I stumbled upon it, first of all, um, by, by reading that church news and just saying, I wonder if there's a way I could do it. But I found, at least in the first time, it caught up. Uh, students caught up doing that and they they all reported to me that they had a better um they had a better general conference because they were prepared and and so that was really when we came back from general conference we had some really great discussions because they were super prepared uh, again i'm a little worried about this next one because i really am going to do it for 60 days but this might be a great one to do at an end of the year um I don't want them just to do these makeup modules, but I do want to provide them. It's still pretty hard, but they think it's simple just because it's the same thing. And again, it's a time period of study instead of studying every verse, because some of those um, topics are bigger than others. But um, I'm really excited to see. Uh, I've used this and when I do EFY, we, I introduce President Nelson's challenge and all week long, I have students coming up to me and my wife and sharing the attribute that they're studying and some of the scriptures they're studying and it has been wonderful. So to do it over a longer period of time and have students really doing it, I'm super excited to see what that's going to look like. I don't think that this would be possible in a in a face-to-face -face class, I think, but I can hold them accountable and something's coming up every day. So I think it, I think it's one of the advantages of learning online, I think. So I don't know if that's what you're looking for. No, thank you. Any other questions? Because there's a couple of things that, that came up that I want to go over, but we'll do that after the recording. And I should say, like, always like check with your coordinator and, you know, those people and make sure what you're doing, that they understand your your philosophy and what you're doing. but. Uh, again, remember to uh, uh, adopt first and then adapt. It's so critical. Awesome. So a quick question on, uh, and, and I'm teaching an institute right now, so it doesn't align exactly, but just trying to understand that when you say you unlock all these different modules for them, the expectation is, of course, that they're completing everything on there. However, they're getting credit as long as they've got one of them done, because that represents 20 to 30 minutes that they were in the scriptures or, or doing something. Is that, am I understanding that right? Yeah, and it can frustrate some people because they're looking at their percentage in, in Canvas and it's like they're 42%, but they're way ahead of everybody, you know, because I'm giving away more assignments. So that can be, I have to really teach them, look, I don't want you to do everything. What I want to do, I really feel like giving them choice, it, you know, we talk about the young women's choice and accountability, giving them choice. Some of them love discussion boards. Some of them don't. And so to allow them to look at that and say, oh, that's a discussion board. I'll do that. Um, I used to ma always make everything was a discussion board some, several years ago and during COVID. And then we switched to no, everything's an assignment and, and different students like different ones. And so to have a mix there, I think has been beneficial for me. Um, and again, putting a link in and bringing it back to one discussion board has worked for me also. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, thanks, Brother Robinson. It's been very helpful to, to see your philosophy and to, and to learn a different perspective. And uh, I really appreciate what you've, what you've presented today. Thank you. If you ask me to do it again, it'll be different tomorrow because we're always changing and learning, but thank you. <laughs>